There can be many reasons why people want to use a pen name on their website. We also call this an alias or a pseudonym. So it's the same thing as whenever you create this persona to write on your blog instead of having your own name up there. So some people do this because they might have a job and they don't want their boss to see that they are blogging or starting to pump out content in their time off or in the same industry. And you know, some people just like to be anonymous. Let me show you in this video how I do this across my sites. For most of my sites, I also use a pen name and other websites I write in my own name. So they're very public and I also share them here on the YouTube channel. So let's dig into it. Let's start by digging a bit into how Google sees this and what Google thinks about using a pen name. After all, it's Google we want to impress with our websites in order to get that traffic. So when asked specifically about this, John Mueller from Google said, totally up to you. I doubt Google's algorithms would judge the realness of author names that you use. Users might though. And this also makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because it's a practice that has been used for ages by journalists. Imagine you're covering war stories or politics and stuff like that. So people have a lot of opinions and thoughts about that. And you might not want to use your own personal name on these matters just to stay safe, you know. So it's been a best practice from journalists for a long, long time. So as long as you use this same name consistently to build up this persona that will sort of be the voice of you, if you will, you're good to go. And also when you think about it, there's no way Google would be able to detect if this is a real person or this is a real person, you know, from just analyzing the text. I mean, if you're using a pretty generic name, there's no way they could detect if it's a real person or if it's a pen name. So how do you go about this? Well, the way I do it is that I come up with a pretty generic and common first name and last name. So if you Google the name, a ton of different things will come up. And then I also create an email that's connected to the domain name. And I'll use that email to set up a picture on Gravatar. So Gravatar is this globally recognized image that will be attached to this email whenever you comment on WordPress sites and so on. And you can find an image with this service called thispersondoesntexist.com. It's a pretty cool web application where you can generate pictures. It's created by an Uber programmer and it's a fun way and, and an easy way to get a picture for somebody who doesn't exist. And then I like to do an about page where I use this picture and this email so people can actually get a hold of this person. That's great when you want to do outreach and if you want people to be able to contact you in regarding to quotes and to get a link, you know, in the future. And I base all this information on real facts about myself or the writer who's actually writing this content. So I don't want to brag about a lot of fake stuff. I want to keep it real and to be like a real person behind this brand. So what about EAT and the authority in Google in regards to using pen names? So in August 2018, Google came out with the Medic update, which was a huge thing in the SEO industry. And they also came up with this term called EAT, and it's something that Google is looking for in high quality pages. And EAT stands for expertise, authoritativeness, and trust. And it's something you build up around the persona or say yourself when you're creating a website in order to rank for stuff that's medical related or financially related or what we call YMYL. You can click the link up here if you want to read more about that. But this can, this can be a problem if you want to use a pen name, because let's say you're a doctor and you want to use a pen name, you'll not be able to show Google and everybody else online that you're actually that person or that this person is actually a doctor or has this degree or this education or certification or whatever. So it can be problematic to use a pen name for these YMYL pages. So I wouldn't recommend it there. For these pages, you want to draw on your own expertise and to show that you're actually an expert on this matter. But for everything else, I think it's a good idea to use a pen name. Before we dive into some pitfalls and things you need to keep in mind in order to make this pen name work for you, I want you to consider subscribing to my channel because I constantly put out helpful videos about SEO and how to make money with your blog and so on. So hit the little bell also if you want to know when I put out new stuff. But let's talk about pitfalls. I want to advise you to use a pretty common and generic first name and last name because otherwise you might create a persona that's actually a real person out there. You want to sort of blend in with everybody. And then I want you to use this persona consistently. Don't build a whole team of five or 10 different pen names because remember, we want Google to be able to pinpoint all these articles back to this persona. So they will actually see that you're an expert or this persona is an expert on all these matters. 
And also make sure to inform all your writers or external writers, you know, anybody who's writing content for your site about this persona. Because otherwise one writer might call this one name or mention that they have several kits or whatever. And then the next article doing that same name, they will have a to totally different persona. So that's pretty important to keep in mind as well, just to have consistency across all your articles. Now let's talk about how you can switch from using your own name to use a pen name. So let's say you have a whole bunch of articles up there on the site already where you've been writing in your own name and now you want to switch the whole website into this pin name. Maybe you want to position yourself to sell the site and you don't want your name all over a website that you don't own in the future. That's also another good reason for using a pin name, by the way. So the first thing you need to do here is to craft a list of everywhere on the web that people are mentioning your name together with this website. We can do this with a search like this, site colon domain.com, and then you Google your first and your last name. So it, you can do a couple of searches here with only your first name and only your last name and so on. And now you'll have a list of all the URLs and all the places your name appear on your website. So start by changing the name on all your articles and on the author on your site and the about page and just use this search function to find everywhere on the site where you use your own name and just switch it up with this pen name. So that's the first thing you should do. So after you've deleted your old author page and you created this new one and you're redirecting this old one to the new one, you can tell Google to clear the cache and just delete that old URL altogether from the search index. And you can also reach out to all these websites that came up during your search for your name and the domain name in order to have these people fix and update these articles or wherever you appear online to feature that new name. And a little note about this feature inside Google Search Console where you can clear the cache in Google or you can delete a page altogether in the search index. Make sure to come back here and just check up on Google because sometimes there seems to be a bug and this content can come back into the search index pretty quickly. So sometimes you need to do it a couple of times. I don't know why, I just found it to be that way. So keep an eye on that just to make sure that it stays out of the index. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you have any questions about all this or anything else for that matter about how to monetize your site or practical SEO or whatever, just leave it in the comments below because I go over all these questions and I try to answer them in the comments but I also do these Q&A videos once in a while where I take all your questions and I answer them one by one. So if you want to know when these come out or just when I have new content coming out, hit the little bell and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.